Let us pray. May the things we think, the things we say and the things we do bring glory to your name and build towards that future, the resurrection and the life of the world to come. For the glory of Jesus. Amen. The question of humanity from ancient times has been, who is God and what is he like? There have been more answers than people. For the most of human history, God was a statue, a thing made of stone and wood, sitting on a shelf or in a shrine or a temple someplace or in an entryway to your home or tent. On leave in Japan this year, we saw shrine after shrine to some local God or rather on the corner of every street block. And if not that, then there was a small Buddhist temple where the monk hung out trying to build up the community's brownie points, their karma points in the spiritual bank. Yet many folks in our society dodge the whole question, the God question, by talking about the universe to explain the good coincidences of this life. The universe must want me to fill in the blank. The universe gave me fill in the blank. As though an inanimate object could do anything. It's only in very recent times now that a minority of the human race have asked, is there even such a thing as God? John, the son of thunder who wrote our gospel today, he was no dill. He lived in the most multicultural, religiously plural empire that the world had seen up to that point. And if he looked at our world empire today, he wouldn't see much difference. From the outset of his gospel account, John declares that the God who created all things by speaking them into existence has now spoken emphatically in answer to all those questions and more in person, in flesh and blood in Jesus of Nazareth. If you want to know exactly who God is, exactly what God's like, and know exactly what God is all about, then there is no other place to look in all of human history or today than to Jesus of Nazareth. John reckons that most people in the world are actually willingly ignorant of him. It's like they've turned out the lights. Even his own people, the Jewish nation, who were primed for his coming by thousands of years of testimony and prophecy. They should have recognized him when he showed up from their ancient texts, yet they ignored the evidence of their own scriptures and the evidence of their own eyes. Because Jesus did and said things that only God himself could do. Yet the evidence is all there, even today, if you care to look. And in terms of relating to God, Neither your ancestry nor your own good deeds can ever put you in sweet with him. You receive Jesus as a gift or not. It's that simple. Because God isn't into doing things in a complicated way. If you are willing to receive Jesus, he is all you will ever need in this life because you are receiving the gift of God himself. You may well have some pretty amazing presents under that tree at home this year if you're so blessed to have those things. But I tell you, there is nothing compared to what is on offer in the Word made flesh, the light and life of the world, Jesus. When you sum up the news of 2023, and indeed the last few years from the news cycle, some would say that the darkness in this world is all-consuming and is in fact in charge of all things. It's winning or it has actually won the day. Even Christians talk to me like they are defeated by the darkness. Yet John writes this account on the other side of Jesus' brutal torture and death on the cross. John writes his gospel account on the other side of Jesus' resurrection from the dead on the third day. John writes his gospel account on the other side of having Jesus breathe his own life and power into him 
on the day of the resurrection, allowing him to do the things that only Jesus could do, that only God could do, and even greater things. John writes his gospel account on the other side of many of his best mates being tortured and martyred for Jesus and the fledgling church hanging daily by a thread under society-wide Jewish and then Roman persecution. Yet John can still testify that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. This is an unshakable fact of the universe, my pessimistic friends. No matter how dark, no matter how bad this world may seem at times, the darkness has not, is not, and cannot ever snuff out the light and life that radiates from Jesus the King. The darkness threw its worst at the light and life of this world, Jesus, and it did not overcome him. Jesus overcame it. This Christmas, look at the news, look at the world around you in a different light, in the light and grace and truth of Jesus, and be encouraged. Know hope, know the future of the human race and for yourself in the face of Jesus. The word of the Lord declares to you today, all who receive me, who believe in my name, I will give power to become God's own children. Amen. Let us pray.